printer settings. So once again, uh, under the preset templates, I'm going to choose my working template. Uh, select general on the left hand side, which will bring up the uh, configurable options on the right hand side. Uh, first up we have size and coordinates and this relates to the print bed. First of all we have the size of the total size of the print bed so this is something that we configured in the configuration wizard earlier 200 by 200. Uh, the print center so this is where uh, slicer will um, create the g-code file and place the part on the heat bed in relation to the entire size of the bed. So in this case it'll put the center of this part on the x-axis 100 millimeters in and on the y-axis 100 millimeters in. So this is dead center to um, the, the, heat, the, the, the print bed itself. Um, so you have the option to you know move around your parts wherever they print you don't have to print them in the center um, like for example for me I'm using the blue painters tape on my um, print bed uh, so I have and I, I put the tape down from left to right so from the from x0 to x200 so what that means is I have the seams between the tape appear you know staggered up the y-axis you could say every um, you know 40 millimeters or so there's you know where the two pieces of tape line up there's a there's like a seam or a joint so if I'm printing something that's quite narrow or something that can print within the thickness of one of those pieces of tape and if I go back to the platter tab um, this uh, quadcopter arm can definitely fit um, within one of those um, tape one of those pieces of tape what I'll do is I'll measure where the where the seam is in relation to the center and it might be um, at 110 millimeters that the seam is and I know that the part is say 25 millimeters wide well okay I want to bring that back down I might bring that back down to say 90 millimeters so now all of a sudden um, it's going to print slightly down on the heat bed uh, in relation to uh, where zero is which means it's going to print pretty much dead center on that piece of blue painters tape it's not going to print any uh, surface down on the seam so I'm gonna end up with a part that doesn't have a seam of the blue painters tape underneath not that that really bothers me at all um, for for the for this particular use whether the seam is there or not it doesn't bother me but it's just nice to have this option uh, and that's you know the flexibility you have um, with this uh, next up we have Z offset so this Z offset is for the first layer where it's going to lay it down or where the whole part is going to be laid down basically in relation or relative to where the z-axis end stop is so this is your micro micro adjustment in software for the z end stop so for example uh, let's just say when you've homed your z-axis uh, if the nozzle is too high up so normally you have one or two pieces of um, paper that you know you should just be able to slide under the nozzle between the heat bed and the nozzle if it's too high so if it's you know if, if it's a you know four or five pieces of, of tape before it hits the nozzle what we can do is we can have a, a negative Z offset here so we can bring it down a bit so we can say we can bring it down say 0.2 millimeters so and and these are the kind of micro adjustments that that you know you you'll want to use you don't you don't want to go too too crazy with this and actually you kind of can't go too crazy on the negative side um, I, I believe you can on the positive side and I'll go over that in a moment so if I set this to minus 0.2 millimeters what that means is the whole part is going to be shifted down 0, 0 0.2 millimeters in relation to where the z-axis end stop is now because I've set my filament diameter and I'll go back to this print settings tab over here and to layers and perimeters because I've set my first layer height to 0 0.2 millimeters I can't put a negative value lower than 0 0.2 millimeters here I can put a lower value but slicer isn't going to create the G code any lower than minus 0 0.2 millimeters so you've got to be aware of that if your end stop is too high 
you've got to bring it down um, on the flip side though you can have it higher so let's just say your nozzle is touching the bed when the Z uh, axis um, or when you've homed your Z axis so the nozzle's touching the bed you can't fit a piece of paper underneath well in this case leaving it as zero the first layer is actually going to print at 0.2 millimeters that still might be too low if it's if the first layer is too close to your heat bed if it's unable to to extrude the plastic you're going to start getting issues with your your drive gear or your hob bolt starting to chew through your plastic and that's going to cause all sorts of issues further up the layers where it's going to start slipping and you're going to be unhappy so in that instance if it's too low you'll want to set this a bit higher so micro adjustments again you'll start off with maybe 0.1 maybe even 0.05 depending on how close you are the very first layer um, you, you want good adhesion so with ABS that I've found you want really good adhesion with ABS so I have it really close I have a very thin smear flat smear of, of um, plastic put down first to make sure that that first layer is going to stick with PLA you can get away with a bit more um, you still want it to come down uh, like a looking like a flat piece of tape you don't want the first layer to look like rope you don't want a spherical piece of plastic come down you do want it to squish down a bit um, so this is your micro adjustment to enable you to do that based on your printer and this is going to be trial and error for you and it is these micro adjustments between you know 0 0.005 and 0 0.01 or 0 0.1 sorry is is all it takes between um, too close to the bed and perfect adhesion or too far from the heat bed where the parts is going to pop off so that's where you make your micro adjustment in relation to your Z axis end stop uh, G code flavor uh, once again so this is the firmware set up you, you don't ever have to change this we set this up during the configuration wizard we keep this as rep wrap um, I, I don't select use relative e distances um, keep that unchecked we only have one extruder and I, I don't use this feature either so moving on to custom G code okay uh, at the start of the G code so when you first start your print what is the printer going to do and these are the commands that are going to be set to the printer before it starts so the first G code command is this G28 and that's going to home all axes so when you hit start print and you see the X axis home the Y axis home and the Z axis home it's because the G code is telling it to do that it puts this command at the very top of the G code um, as it compiles the next thing it does is it does this uh, lift nozzle it lifts the nozzle by five millimeters so after the X Y and Z axis is homed it then lifts up the extruder by five millimeters and this is the reason because it's being told to at that point um, it's then waiting to heat up it's waiting for the, uh, the the heat bed to heat up it's waiting for the, the hot end to heat up and you're starting to print and away you go uh, and at the end of the print so this is the end G code commands um, what is in there by default uh, is this first one which is turn off hot end temperature so this turns off the hot end yeah that's exactly what you want uh, the next thing it does and it does that instantaneously it turns it off and goes to this next command it then turns off the heat bed temperature if you're using it so if you're printing ABS and it's set to 90 degrees it'll instantly turn the heater off as well which is exactly what you want uh, these next um, few items are something that I've added I think uh, besides the home axis so I'll go over them now the next thing I'm doing is I'm changing the coordinate system that the uh, printer uses from oh, I forget from absolute values to relative values and I'm doing that because what I want to do the next line here is lift the nozzle by 0 0.3 millimeters so I'm telling um, the printer when you finish printing after you've turned off the hot end turn off the heat bed lift the nozzle wherever it is by 0 0.3 millimeters and I'm doing that because um, previously it was just homing uh, the x-axis and obviously my hot end is attached to the x-axis and before when I wasn't lifting the nozzle it would simply move back home and I found well 
the hot end's still hot, right? So plastic is still oozing out of the hot end, and if it has to move, you know, any certain length across the part that it's just finished printing, all of a sudden it's depositing another, you know, uh, layer of plastic that is just oozing across the entire surface. And it, you know, it could ruin the top layer finish if it was a, a perfect finish. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm lifting the nozzle by 0.3 millimeters. I'm then changing back to absolute values. So absolute values is what it was before I changed to relative. And finally I'm homing the X axis. So once the X axis has homed, I have a couple more commands. I'll just scroll below. Um, I am sending the Y axis to 190 millimeters, so pretty much to the end of the heat bed. Uh, so the Y axis has the, uh, the, the print surface attached to it, and all I'm telling the printer to do once it's finished is to move the heat bed out toward me. So uh, it's quite good to have you know, the, the, the X axis home, so that's moving the hot end away, and then finally the print is being presented to you, it's coming out at you and finally the motors are being disabled. Uh, lastly moving to the extruder settings um, so here we are as we set up in the configuration wizard earlier was the nozzle diameter set to 0.4 millimeters we're not using multiple extruders. Uh, retraction, retraction is quite an important one as well um, retraction refers to the reverse of filament flow so this is sucking back the filament uh, out of the hot end and the reason why this feature is quite important is because um, the plastic while it's hot just wants to ooze out of the hot end constantly so while you're not printing while the print head is moving and it doesn't need to deposit any plastic you want the retraction to occur to create a bit of a vacuum so it's sucking up all that um, molten plastic as such. So for the Bowden I'm retracting quite a lot, I'm retracting four millimeters of filament um, per retraction. This is a lot more than the direct drive setup that I had previously. The speed at which I'm retracting is quite fast as well. I'm retracting at 100 millimeters a second. So I'm retracting four millimeters at 100 millimeter, 100 millimeters a second and I'm setting this quite fast um, because for the entire time the retraction is taking place, the hot end is sitting there on top of your part. And if it's there for any length of time, just the fact that the nozzle being at 230 degrees is sitting on top of your part can produce deformities in your part if it's just sitting there. It's pretty much touching it pretty much. So setting this as fast as I can. The uh, the Mark 7 drive gear that I have on the Bowden, which is um, attached direct to the stepper motor, uh, doesn't slip when I set it this fast, so this is a reliable speed for me. I could probably go faster, um, but if I'm doing a very long print, I, I don't want it to slip. I don't want um, bits of plastic to get stuck within that drive gear because that causes all sorts of slipping and filament flow issues further down the track. You, you don't want any any filament stuck in your, in the teeth of the drive gear, so 100 is reliable for me. Uh, leaving the minimum travel after retraction uh, to 2 millimeters, and definitely retracting on layer change is a must. Uh, and yeah, so that concludes the settings that I use with Slicer. The last thing to do is to go back to the Platter tab and click Export G-Code to finally create the, the finished G-Code file which can be sent to your printer for printing. Um, choose a name, choose a location, press Save. And that concludes uh, my tutorial on Slicer. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please click that subscribe button. There's plenty more to come. And um, yeah, happy printing.